Hey friends, Shay here. So yes, I have a no makeup face, but I wanted to get on here and talk to you about the things that I did end up reading in the month of January. I did do a wrap up for the first half of the month. I will leave that linked in the corner for you. I think it's this corner, I don't remember. But I am very excited to talk to you about the other things that I've read in the month. So as per usual, we're gonna start with the manga and then we are gonna go into the books. So first things first, I did finish off six series this month. I will leave the video where I talk about all of them, again, linked in the corner, but these are things like Takani and Hana, Sweat and Soap, all-time favorites for me, so I am going to leave all of my thoughts there for you, so definitely go and check that video out. Next up on the list is Pretty Boy Detective Club Volume 2. Now, I really loved Volume 1. It took me a little bit longer than I hoped to to get through Volume 2. Um, I'm giving this a solid 4. It's really fun. I don't love it quite as much as I loved the first volume. But I do love the direction of the series and will continue to pick them up as long as they continue to come out. But again, this is a very Oron High School Host Club feeling kind of story. So if you're a big fan of Oron, I would recommend this. It does have more of that mystery element to it, which gives it an added element of plot that Oron didn't have. So it does make it exciting and fun and does make it feel individual and its own. But each character very much falls into a certain archetype. And this is just a really fun exploration. Again, Solid 4 will be picking up more, though this one did dip down slightly in my enjoyment, only slightly though. Next on the list, I have The Abandoned Empress Volume 1. Now this is a full color story. Um, I believe this one was a webtoon that is now being converted into a manga format for us. Do not quote me on that, I'm not 100% sure. But in this, we follow a young woman who's been destined her entire life to be the empress of this city. But what we found out is that the, basically the like foretelling was misinterpreted. And so she got entangled in the lines of fate in a way that wasn't what the gods felt appropriate for her. So she gets a chance to basically relive her life over starting from a certain point. And I think it's really fantastically done. I really like the way everything is weaving and the threads are weaving through all of this. It is very impressive. I am very happy and very pleased with the direction and will be definitely picking up more. And I would recommend you guys pick some up as well. Another one that I read was the Dragon Knight's Beloved. I fully blame Laura from over at Laura Meets Manga, I believe is her new handle. It was Laura A. Grace. She recently changed her handle. She'll be linked. Um, I fully blame her for this. I'll link her review. But essentially, this is about Melissa, who's been a maiden training her entire life in the castle, and about this Dragon Knight who now has to go and take care of his lordly duties because his brother unexpectedly passed away. And... There's this woman who thinks she's entitled to being engaged to him because she was engaged to the brother, but he brings Melissa with him, and so they're in this, like, fake engagement situation. I'm thriving on it because clearly he's cared for Melissa for a long time, but she needed to grow up and mature, and now that she's at the age of maturity and she was planning on leaving the castle anyway, he swiftly, swiftly takes her away to his kingdom and things go from there. It is so fun. The dragons love her as well, and that was a big thing for him because basically he's in charge of a dragon aviary for all intents and purposes, and so his bride needs to be someone that dragons get along with. And yes, it's amazing. I'm not going to say too much more, but 10 out of 10 would recommend this series. Definitely a new favorite for me. The next manga on my list is Daily Report About My Witch Senpai Volume 1. This is only going to be a two volume series, which breaks my heart because this art style, for one, is adorable and I'm obsessed. But secondly, these two are equally adorable, and I'm obsessed with them. And we see our um, main female character, Shizuka, basically, she's someone who can easily be taken advantage of, and we see her face a previous relationship where she was taken advantage of in this volume. And so I would put content warnings out there for... Um, 
manipulation in a relationship and a not healthy relationship because that is definitely who this guy was to her and he took advantage of her. And so we see our fellow co-worker, her Kohei, so he's a year younger than her, I believe. So she's his senpai at work. And you see him enable her to stand up for herself. And it's fantastic. They are absolutely precious together. He, you know, she regularly offers to, like, fly him around on her broom. And he's like, no, I'm not going to tire you out that way. Let's just walk together and spend time together. And, like, he thinks about all the things that other people take advantage of her for. And it makes me love him all the more. And just, yes, I'm obsessed with them. I'm sad there's only going to be two volumes. Please give us more by this mangaka because I need it all. And then I did also reread and annotate all three volumes that are currently out of Yakuza Lover um, for Thirsty Thursday. I will leave the live show linked in the cards because we basically go through all of my tabs on that live stream. So if you want to hear my full thoughts, other than I'm still obsessed with it, like, check out that video. Are you done scratching? Lights on. Are you done scratching now? Thank you. The cat tree being in the loft. Anyways, I also have Living Room Matsunaga-san, Volume 9. I continue to love and adore this series. It is a boarding house age gap romance. It only has two more volumes left. I'm so excited to see where it goes, but at the same time, I'm sad to say goodbye to these characters, just like some of my other favorites. Um, I'm glad that their stories and their arcs aren't being overly drug out, but at the same time, like, I would love to spend more time with them. So, like, I get it. But anyway, I love Miko. I love Matsunaga. So definitely would recommend this series if you are a shoujo boarding house lover. Okay, and I believe that is all for the manga. Let's dive in to the books. Um, another comic slash graphic novel that I reread in the month of January was Lore Olympus Volume 1. This contains the first 25 chapters of the webtoon. I annotated my copy as well for this. I loved my reread. It was so fun to go back and revisit the story from the beginning because I am current on the series and seeing all of the ground pieces laid down in those first 25 chapters that we're now seeing the big ramifications of in the current arc of the story is just amazing. Rachel Smith clearly knew what she was doing with the series. Um, I left my copy in the office, but 10 out of 10 would recommend the series. Please read it. You can read it for free on Webtoon. The physical copies are very well made, heavy photocopy paper. It's formatted very nicely. Use of white space was fantastic. 10 out of 10 would recommend. A another um, comic slash graphic novel that I ended up reading in January was Odessa. Um, I do believe that this will continue with the way this leaves off, but essentially it is after the apocalypse and we're following this young woman who randomly gets a birthday letter delivered to her from her mother who has been absentee basically since this happened. And so she wants to go seek out her mother. Her two younger brothers sneak out and follow her, and it's about their adventures. I don't want to say too much more because I do not want to spoil this, but this was very poignant and very well done considering the subject matter. And it does go to some relatively scary places for teenagers to be on their own. This is not a light and fluffy story by any means. There are true dangers in this world and you see them face them and you see them run into people who they haven't seen in a very long time um, and things go from there. Um, the art style was really unique. It's all kind of in this like pale peachy color along with the black and the white and I think it's a really great utilization of color. And I was really impressed by this and would recommend it. So, yes, definitely give Odessa a try if you haven't. And you will probably see me reading a lot more comics and graphic novels this year just because I'm enjoying the format a lot. 
All right, next up on the list is The Five Day Reunion by Mona Schroff. Now, y'all know I fell in love with Mona Schroff last January, and this new installment in a new series through the Harlequin Special Edition line did not disappoint. Essentially, this is a second chance romance at a previously married couple. So they show up to this big family event, and the family doesn't know that they're divorced. <laughs> No one has told them. <laughs> so they have to pretend they're still married. And through that and through all of these traditions steeped in their culture, they get reacquainted and fall back in love. It is fantastic. I gave it five stars. I think Mona Schroff really does great work about bringing her cultural heritage into her novels. And I have always enjoyed what I've read from her. And I cannot wait to see who else we get stories for in this series because there are several characters that you get to know throughout this that have an opportunity to get their own stories. A lot of this has to do with like schooling and being too busy. And it's a great discussion about how people can separate or quote unquote fall out of love in a marriage. And Again, so well done, 10 out of 10, really enjoyed, would recommend. Next is another one that I am absolutely obsessed with, and that is Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation, Volume 1. I would die for Wei Wuxian and Lan Zan. I love them. They are amazing. <laughs> Basically, Wei Wuxian was killed, and he's now been reincarnated in this other body, and through that, he runs into Lanzan, and he has to face his past. Again, I don't want to say too much. I will do a dedicated review with more details coming up. But for now, where this is just a non-spoilery wrap-up kind of situation, just know I'm obsessed. Volume 1 was amazing. I will be continuing. These are amazing. Like, I love these far more than I probably should. So, yes. Would definitely recommend this one. Now, let's talk about some disappointments, shall we? So, I DNF'd Rage and Ruin. I got 100 pages into this, and I was so bored. I just did not care. I feel like this is an a YA urban fantasy of, like, 2014. And though there are things I love about that era, there are things that annoy me about that era. And this falls into the doing all of the things that I annoy, that annoy me in a middle book, which is the longest book in the series, by the way. It's like almost 600 pages. And I got 100 pages in and I just didn't care to continue, which means that I'm also DNFing the rest of the series, which is Grace and Glory. I... I'm just okay to say goodbye to the series, and this was a series that was on my 22 and 2022 list, so I'm sad to, to let it go, but at the same time, it's really time, and I'm okay with that. So we've got some arcs that I read to talk about. So the first one is Highland Wolf by Lindsay Sands. I think for this one, if you're a fan of Lindsay Sands writing or of Highlander romances, I do think this one's worth a try. The cover obviously is amazing. Um, I ended up giving this one three and a half. It was a solid Lindsay Sands, but it didn't do anything to wow me necessarily to where I want to pick up a physical copy. Um, I'm fine to just have my digital copy and... Like, it's kind of forgettable. Like, I don't even remember the characters' names, and I read it maybe 10 days ago. Like, it just didn't stick for me. So that's why it's a three and a half. And then I got How to Deceive... I read How to Deceive a Duke by Samara Parrish. This is her second book in her series. I forget the name of the first. But I ended up enjoying this one. I think it's pretty stereotypical and stays in its lane. I did give it three stars. It didn't do anything to wow me, but it didn't do anything to necessarily, like, offend me either. So, and again, this is another one that just kind of isn't sticking with me. And that's kind of what's happening a lot with historical for me. So I'm not going to be picking up too many in the near future just because I don't feel like that's super fair to the authors for me to be requesting copies and me just feeling meh about all of them. So... That is something you will see in what I'm reading in the future is it's going to probably be less historical, more fantasy, contemporary kind of stuff. Speaking of contemporary, um, I did read Out of the Blue by Alice and Bliss. 
Now, I loved this in theory, did not like it in execution. When it comes to Alice in Bliss, I've had two books from this series that were big wins for me, but book one and this book were big misses for me. Basically, this one has disordered eating on page, I think is the easiest way to describe it for me. And being someone who has disordered eating and has had disordered eating since I was a teen, I, that didn't resonate very well with me. So that won't bother some people, but if that is a trigger for you, you most likely won't enjoy this. So it's one of those, it falls into the trope of losing weight to get the guy, and I hate those because... She should be proud to be her curvy self, and she's not, and that hurts. <laughs> I'm not saying every story has to be that. Like, I understand that not every story can be that, but this one had a lot of potential to have a guy who was in fitness, supportive of her curvy body, just helping her to get rid of some of her um, unhealthy habits, I guess you could say, like, you know, just eating a little bit better or a little bit less or something, or toning her curvy body rather than trying to make it smaller, and helping her fix her disordered eating. Like, there's some great things that could have happened with this novel, and they just didn't. So that made me super sad. I think I gave it two stars. I don't remember what I gave it. I gave it two stars, I think. But yeah, it was not a win for me. So sadly, I think I'm going to call it on Alice and Bliss for now. Because like I say, I've had two that worked and two that haven't. And if it's a 50-50 chance, unless I'm really invested in the plot, I probably won't pick up another one. But on to something that made me a little happier. That's Texas Homecoming by Carolyn Brown. I love Carolyn Brown and her Western romances. This one did not disappoint. Solid four. Sorry, I misspoke. It's actually the second book in a series, not the first in a series. Um, this is one of those where it's one of those family saga kind of things like she did with her um, Longhorn Canyon series. This one's the Ryan family series. And this is a book that definitely gives you that. It takes place in the winter, so you definitely have that cozy feel. Like, I did feel cold at times reading this book. The descriptions were so well done. So basically... Cody's been a traveling doctor for a long time. He's finally come home. And when he comes home, he runs into Stephanie, who's a vet also. And this is a second chance romance. And yes, very, very good. Really did enjoy. And then last but not least is Good Girl Complex by L. Kennedy. I gave this also two stars. Um, basically, if you like After by Anna Todd, you'll probably enjoy this novel because it has a lot of the same beats, a lot of the same hits and notes. And I feel like this book would have been great like 10 years ago, but now it doesn't work. And again, I might just be too old. It definitely reads young new adult. So I think someone in their early 20s or just out of high school will probably love this book. But it is not for me. So I did put that in my review that this is just spoiled rich kids and, you know, a townie, essentially, who is bitter about the rich kids who come to college. And it just, ugh, I, I just couldn't. It fell into every cliche and trope that I hate. So sadly, this one was a miss for me. So it's not been the best reading month. <laughs> the first half of the month was much stronger than the second half. But all in all, I am very excited for my reads in February. I'm starting off February with great things. I'm very excited because I am in the middle of I Married a Merman. Yep, book four in Prime Mating Agency has hit. I'm in the middle of that. I'm also still in the middle of... Do I still have it nearby? Yes. Of The Gathering Storm by Robert Jordan, and I've got lots more haiku coming. I guess that's another thing. I did reread um, the first five volumes of haiku this month for the live show that will be on Saturday. I'm very excited. I'm going to host the first one by myself, and then I'll have co-hosts for the rest of them. But yes, I'm very excited about my reading in the month of February. If you want to know more about what I'm going to be reading, you can check the video that I've already posted. 
So thanks for watching. I know this one was long and a little bit rambly. But if you're here just because you love me, leave me some sort of ghost emoji for Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Was it all just a dream, just all in my head?